And when Richard comes with me to get the chairs, um, if people who want them could sort of try and get them quietly, that would be great because we need to start the meeting. Thank you everybody for coming to the Brentster Parish Council Council meeting. Uh, first of all, we need to say declarations of interest. Any councillors? Should we go around the table? Declarations of interest. Just a member of the Village Golf Club. Village Golf Club. Village Golf Club. Nothing. I think I know it'll come up, so the sailing stuff for me. See ya. Nothing else that I can think of on this. Saxon Field as well. Saxon Field, yeah. That's a planning matter, I think. All right. Right. Chris? I said, yeah, it's right. I'm right. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear. Com Royce and planning, number B. Number B. Okay, thanks very much indeed. Um, uh, apologies for absence. John Wareham. John Wareham, apologies for absence and lecture. Minutes, consider approving the minutes of the ordinary meeting held on the 3rd of August 2021. Have we got any comments on that? Yes, Bob Walker. I'll propose it. You'll propose it? I've got problems. For okay, you. Stephen. Are you proposing anything? Um, do the list of the chairman's insistence on openness and transparency. Um, I must question Councillor De Winter's proposal, which I seconded, to give Church £2,000. So he, he has declared in his statement of, of interest that he is patron of Brancaster. Explanation, please. You don't know what that is? No. So I, you're objecting. You're, you're objecting. Can we just be clear about this? You're objecting to the fact that Tom De Winter was one of the seconders of No, the I, se I seconded it. Tom right. put forward right. that in his statement of interest, which I've been going through, right. that states that he is the patron of, he is the patron of Brancaster. Right, so and why think, does I that... Think it has to do with the church, but Tom will explain. I, I'll just ask for an explanation before we start on. an objection, I just explanation. All right, if you could, if you would like to do that then, Tom. Right, okay. Um, Patron of Brankster, I've been asked that for a long time. <laughs> Basically, uh, traditionally, as you know, our family's been here a long time, and in the, in the deep and distant past, we literally chose and paid for the vicar. And that sounds a bit odd, but we chose and paid for the vicar. And uh, obviously, uh, the vicar in those days basically come from Brankster and Titchell, because they share the normally the vicar of Brankster and the curates of Titchell. Uh, and uh, that was something which has been passed down from generation to generation by my family, and I happen to be the current incumbent. What do I actually do? Well, when you have a uh, when the vicar is, uh, is goes and he's replacing, the bishop, myself, and because of the size of the benefice, Michael Meakin of Old Hans Stanton, in the stranger state, the three of us sit there and we interview the vicars. And we try and choose the best person to, uh, 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 to be in the vicar. It's also in conjunction with the church wardens, whose advice is also sought, and they actively participate in this. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's Michael Meakin, the bishop, and myself to actually make the final decision. Obviously, we don't go across the kids' advice. How often do we do it? Whenever we lose it, uh, choose the vicar. I think my grandfather did it twice in his, in his lifetime. I've done it twice already because the vicar says it lasts so long. <laughs> so it's, uh, that's the way it is. Um, Can I ask a question, it. Tom? It's presumably listed on your sheet that you can find. It is in the Western book. Okay. Uh, uh, it is listed on my. Interest, but it is an uh, anachronism, something a bit old fashioned. And that's the way it is. Okay. Thank See, you. That was the only the reason I brought it up because Tom proposed two thousand pounds and I seconded it. Right. Right. And, and I knew that through that that right. people had something to do with the church, so I just okay. wanted it made clear. Great. But it's very much a stand, it's very much a stand back thing. I only get involved if there's a problem. Right. But thank you for bringing that up, that's fine. Any other things that anyone would like to talk about with those minutes? Uh, Bob, Bob, would you like to propose? propose? Do I have a seconder? Jeremy, those minutes. All in favour? Thank you. Minutes are approved. 
No. You said you were going to have names of those two. Uh, yes, later today. Do I, I think I do that when we take the votes. Are just on the one vote, not on all the votes. Are we going to do matches of rising on this with a couple of votes? On, the, on B? Uh, on 3B? The, I just mentioned there's one thing, although the minutes are, are correct, I was looking at paragraph fin uh, finance uh, and there's a... Are we talking about the minutes on the 3rd of August? I am. Okay. Top of page 3, uh, BPC responsible for insurance and general purposes and BSSC for making that money from the state of So I think we have an initial, an initial problem there. Is it the Fairways Committee? On the top of page three. Uh, that's that's the Sports and Social Club. Or is it, uh, it yeah, but what does BSFC practice for Sports and Social Club? We, know, we right. probably need to write that out. Because it mixes in with the same club. Yeah, because it's the yeah. same initials as the same. I'm sure the same club would love to help practice this playing field, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So can we make that amendment to the minutes? That, I think that's very good. I think it's confusing. There are so many different organisations. I think it's really good for us to be very clear. Okay. Uh, we now move to the minutes of the extraordinary meeting held on the 9th of August 2021, and this was a meeting um, that took place here. Are there any questions about those minutes? Yes. That's me again. Um, there we go. Where are we? I am Council Cop and have received from the National Trust this statement. Sailing Club, you are correct to say that, that this is an error in the plan for the Sailing Club lease. We are going to look at removing this village green from the lease. Now, where, is where, that, we, where are you reading from? I, I, I don't understand where this is this from. Well, never mind where it come from. I, I come from the National Trust. So this is something that the yeah. National and Trust what, has given what you? What I'm saying is, the, as, as we try to explain one or two of us at that meeting, <coughs> it was illegal. I, I told you at least three times that nobody would listen. You voted for it. No, we didn't. The agreement was voted on at a meeting earlier this year, it and was it was carried on, on, at that meeting. What we were discussing was the map that goes with the amendments that we agreed and were voted on. We didn't. We agreed on that without knowing the full facts. If Stephen, not, not I read the agreement to. out line by line, but deliberately, we map at the time. deliberately, and then we said oh, we would find a map that we could all agree on. We haven't found that map yet. The National Trust needs to be, I'd, I'd like to propose, I'll cut all the rest out. You can't I'll, make a proposal. It's not on the agenda. Oh, well that'll come on later then, that's okay. If you want to propose something, Stephen, you need to put it on the agenda. Uh, if I might make a suggestion, can I interrupt a minute? Move that lot of seat. Can you take the trolley and go around that way and collect a load of chairs and chairs to bring back that way? I'll take them that way. Yeah, that's the back of the that way. Yeah, wait. Right. Um, you, were you reading from an email from the National Trust? Yes, yes. And with response to that, which said that the, the, the yellow bit on that original map shouldn't apply. I have, I have been in touch with me, uh, stating that the whole thing was illegal and that it's going to be removed. Yes. No disrespect to the Sion Club, there's no use to them, there was no use to us, there was no use to the National Trust. If we'd have left it, which some people wanted to do, push, 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 that would have gone through for another generation to sort them out of. And all I'm trying to do, and one or two others, is to get things on a legal basis. With, with respect, Stephen, I had actually also been engaged in that. Well, good. Because once I saw it, I good. thought it was a bit old, and I addressed it, I think, in the meeting Victoria about it. I, I think I think the whole should the whole thing should be put on hold until Stephen, until the, we go. the amend the the agreement with the National Trust, I read line by line, very carefully at a meeting, and we all voted on it and approved it. What we haven't approved is the map that is attached to that, and that is what we are trying to approve. And we did not approve the map at the last meeting, 
and it is up for discussion again today. What we're thinking about now are the minutes from the meeting held on the 9th of August. See you. Um, going back to the original meeting on the 9th of August, I agree to it, not due to the map, it being compatible with the map. Right. But not by agreeing to it. Make a point of four because simply the National Trust should be communicating to the club, right. not the individual councils. I uh, therefore, all th therefore, this email which Stephen has received is available to us all to read and digest and consider. We can't have it just brought up at a meeting. Oh, oh, By the way, I have an email. Yeah. You, know, you, should have, you should afford it directly to the clerk immediately. It was sent to me personally, Tom. Well, that's, yes, that's all I never You, cannot, you cannot negotiate personal issues by yourself as a council. Well, I have all the to negotiate anything. All I was trying to do was find the truth. The, the National Trust is in the wrong. They should, yes. they should yes. have sent it to Simon. Yes, I totally agree. All right. We've got agreement on that. We now need to get to the minutes of the 9th of August. Do I have a proposer? Bob Norton, do I have a seconder? Thank you very much, Richard. Can we vote on approving the minutes of the 9th of August? Yeah. All those in favor, raise your hands. All those against, raise your hands. Any, are you abstaining, Chris? Are you abstaining or against? Um, I'll, I'll go against them, sorry. That's okay, don't worry. This, this is what democracy is about, Chris. <laughs> um, are there matters arising from those? We know the map is because we're going to discuss that later. Are there any other matters arising from those minutes? All right, okay. Chair Persons Report. First of all, I just really thank so many of you for coming tonight because it's really great that we have so many people participating in the Paris Council meetings. The Saxon Field car park was up and running. Thank you to the volunteers, particularly Amy, Mel, and Ross, who did such a great job. Thank you to Council Stuart Winton for basically donating the land and everyone who came and volunteered for it. It was a great success. And it was a real example of how we can come together as a community. And we all worked hard, and the first day there were 56 cars there. And people uh, gave donations, and it was a really big success. So thank you to everyone who participated. It's still going to be open this weekend, I believe, and we'll hear from the ladies later in the meeting. Uh, we still don't have any news yet on the permanent car parking solutions, but we've proven that an overflow car park does work. Uh, car park passes procedure, we're going to review that and there will be, we'll work, we'll work on some guidelines that we'll get together for the council for next meeting. Um, our external auditors have received an objection to our AGAR form, questioning the right of Frankston Parish Council to receive money from the car park. This was filed by an elector of the parish known as the objector who has nominated Rod Cook, Secretary of Shagpra, as their representative. Mm -hmm. These objections will cost the Brancaster Parish Council, and therefore you as residents, £350 per hour for our external auditor to deal with. A vexatious Freedom of Information request from Mr Cook on behalf of Shagpra was refused by the Brancaster Parish Council. I've spoken to the legal representative, the, the possible legal representatives, and as you know, £10,000 in funds have been ring-fenced to fight any legal challenge. We are beginning the initial inquiries to protect Brancaster Parish Council and its residents from the continued onslaught by Shagra. 
This advice will come at £355 per hour. Uh, we will be discussing possible engagement of lawyers in a private session after this meeting, of the private session of the Council. Simon Bauer and I attended two online meetings on the 20th of August and the 25th of August to discuss the unlawful campout which took place over the bank holiday weekend. These meetings were chaired by myself and attended by the golf club, the police, the National Trust, and the first was attended by James Wilde, the MP. Natural England sent their apologies on both occasions. Both meetings were about planning for safety issues that might have arisen during the protest. Fortunately, the event went ahead without incident. I've had two interesting pieces of correspondence this month. One was an email chain forwarded, I can only think by mistake, from the Shadpur Executive Committee. The other was sent anonymously to me personally and contained documents relating to the planning of the unlawful campout, which I immediately sent to the police. On another topic, um, please see our Facebook page. We've put up ways to help locally with the Afghan rescue crisis. There is an organization um, put together by the Norfolk Council and I encourage everybody to do what they can towards that. And there's also details for the upcoming Dark Skies Festival, which has lots of lovely stargazing activities, including one on Barrow Common. Freebridge are going to have an open house here at Frankfurter State Village Hall from 2 to 8 p.m. on the 28th of September. And they really want everybody in Brackets to stay to go along to give their opinion about what sort of housing we need in the village. And I really encourage everybody to go. I finally, I'd like to invite everybody to the Platinum Jubilee planning meeting on Tuesday the 14th of September, next Tuesday here at 6.30 in Brankster Village Hall. Please bring all your ideas, however mad, however crazy, let's think about how we can all celebrate the Jubilee together. We're now going to have the report from the Borough Councillor. No, I've not the report because I sent it to Simon and then he disseminated it great. to all the councillors. That was about COVID. Okay, great. We um, are very lucky to have Andrew Jameson, our committee councillor, here tonight. Would you like to do a report? Um, thanks, Chair. Yes, I will do a very brief report. As you know, we're, we're speaking to a packed audience. Um, if I may, uh, I'll turn over there. Yes, please do. Uh, so that you'll be able to hear what I want to say. I'm going to be very brief because I think there's quite a lot on the agenda. Uh, but um, what uh, into quickly about what I have been up to here. Um, a lot of you will know from previous reports that I have been keen to, to address uh, in one go and at one time the issues of parking, of speeding, uh, of um, a, a lack of buses, uh, the need for park and ride um, along this coast. And that is now beginning to come uh, to fruition. The bigger picture uh, will take, uh, will, will come to to Cabinet hopefully in October, but the latest in November. I'm very pleased uh, with the work uh, that two um, parishioners have done here on the Brankster um, uh, Road Parking and Safety Group. I think it's an incredibly powerful initiative. The Chair's already mentioned how things are beginning to, uh, to, to, to work in terms of parking. I think we can, we can develop that. Uh, but I very much want to develop the plans that the county has on a bottom-up basis rather than a prescriptive basis. So I continue to want to work with, um, with the, those particular individuals um, at, uh, at, a, at a future date in the near term. Initially, though, there's been, well, we've moved ahead on one thing that I was, quite, uh, was very keen to put forward, put a million pounds into a road safety community fund. Uh, the purpose of this is, um, is a capital fund dedicated to deliver uh, 100 new road safety schemes in and by local communities across Norfolk over the next four years. Uh, the, uh, the, the, these are, are, are small scale, they're £10,000, uh, up to £10,000, and then local highway improvements, they could be speed limit changes, they could be signing lining changes and things like that so that we can get cracking on these because there's a great deal of interest again bottom up that we can do that so 
uh, I'd like to uh, bring ideas forward. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it is a million pounds over the county, uh, but um, I'm pleased to say that uh, the, the, the Kings Lynn and West Norfolk are, are going to be where this starts off. So we, we will have the first, uh, first bite of this particular cherry. Um, and um, uh, and uh, the, the perp, what we will do is, when, if you have ideas which come to me, come through me, we will have advisors to help fine tune those ideas to, to, to make them work. So things are already beginning um, in, the, in the smaller way. You've mentioned uh, the, uh, the, the Norfolk response to the Afghan crisis. I think you know, we, we, <laughs> I'm really proud of Norfolk. We, 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 are, uh, we are standing up and being counted here. The, the, the website the chair referred to is very comprehensive, uh, gives a, a list of things that we urgently need bed frames, new mattresses, curtains and the like, and the things indeed that we don't need. Um, if, if one feels more confident about donating money, uh, then, then one does that through the Diocese of, uh, of Norwich website, where the, the Bishop of, of Norwich's Refugee Fund is standing by there. I'd remind uh, you all as well about our uh, One Million Trees for Norfolk project. Uh, we've set aside money in the budget for one million trees over the next four years, and that's parishes, community groups, indeed landowners, residents, uh, they're all taking part in a number of different planting initiatives. Um, uh, you can go on to, uh, to, to our website, uh, norfolk.gov.uk uh, forward slash one million trees for Norfolk, and that will give you an idea of what what to do, how to apply, and, uh, and uh, there's advice there on the end of the phone uh, or online um, as to what the trees would be appropriate. Uh, the, uh, I'm going to pretty much leave it there, uh, just to say you've probably heard uh, you know, uh, the, the, the moves on, um, uh, 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 on the first stage of what we hope will be a, um, a sorting out of the adult social care problem um, with 1.25% increase in national insurance. I'm yet to see what that will mean for Norfolk County Council. I think this will appear to be going via the NHS and then may get to Norfolk County Council. Money sent that way has not in the past found its way uh, to us in adult social care. The initial cost, however, for a, with a £300 million uh, pay book is that uh, 1.25% that's initial one, uh, 4 million quid, which represents 1% of the total council tax, the sort of hit that we have to deal with um, within, the, uh, within the council. That's it. Thanks very much, Andrew. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you. Can I just make it um, ask? Mm -hmm. I attended a Zoom meeting for that uh, million trees yeah. on Zoom. I haven't received the um, recording of it or any of the information packs. Can you chase that up for sure. me, please? Yeah, absolutely. No problem. Mm -hmm. Actually, that reminds me, Chris, because there are free trees being given out by Norfolk. I have put that link on the Facebook page, okay. so it's on there. So, um, report from the park? Nothing to say. Nothing to say. It's been a holiday, hasn't it? It has been a holiday, deservedly so. Um, all right, finance. To receive the financial report from the club. Um, the public pack, which is online um, and which councillors have had, um, shows a bank balance of 156,600 or so. Um, and the expenditure against budget with the usual notes. Um, section 137, because of the money we gave to the churches last month, um, I added that to the budget for that, because otherwise the sums don't work out quite the same way, so we have to list that expenditure separately. So that amount is, is overspent for the time of the year. Um, salaries award and insurance we've already spoken about in previous months. So nothing is over budget other than those lines. Um, and then... Does anyone have any questions about those finances there? Okay. Um, and the um, expenditure for approval, um, you can see the ones that were approved at the meeting. Um, Snatch and PC is for supplies which I used 
um, while we're still in the park there. Um, there's glass cutting. Um, Sarah Raven, who took the minutes of the meeting while I was away. Um, the inspection is for the um, play area at the um, Brackets Village Hall, um, which we agreed to pay. Um, and then there's a meeting pay, uh, the payment for um, the meeting that we had, an extra meeting here, and the port of loop, which is for the um, car park. Um, and the salary is, as I noted, to council as an approx because um, I've been having to change tax code. So. Um, so the council provided two portfolios at the um, car park site, which I think were very well used. <laughs> um, great. Does um, anybody have any objection to any of those being paid? No. <coughs> right. Good. Okay. Um, we need to consider the appointment of an internal auditor. Our uh, internal auditor is retired this year, and we need to consider the appointment of a new one. Um, I recommended Mike Ruston. Um, I've declared to councillors that he's a personal friend of mine, but he's done the accounts at Snettisham for probably seven years, I think, in all. Um, I'm more than happy if you want to go and find someone else because of the personal connection, but I leave that to you to decide. I trust you and gentlemen. If he's reliable and has been done over there, then same thing for another one. And cheap. And cheap, right? Cheaper as well, yes, yeah, or cheap. Right. Are also, there any objections to us using Mike Ruston for Ruston. Ruston. I propose Michael Ruston. I'll second that. All those in favour? Right. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Um, planning. Now, what, I'm, what I suggest we do on the planning, because we've got a lot of commercial planning applications here, which it will take longer. So, what I suggest we do is we do the residential first, and then we go to the planning um, for the commercial. Any objections to that? Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to have to disappear. Yes, you are. You're going to have to leave. Yes, you're going to have to leave the room. So, um, what we'll do is what we'll consider first is the single story rear extension at Skylark, nine people's house farm cottages in Brancaster. Then we will consider the 2101607 replace caravan with dwelling on West Lee, 19 Town Lane, Brancaster. Then we will consider the replacement windows on flat 18 at Dormley House. And then after we've done those, we will go to commercial. If you have anything to say about those three residential projects, could you please raise your hand now and you'll have three minutes to speak. Yes, Steve. Uh, regarding the West Street? Yes. Um, they're stating their planning application they've got uh, access of 8 metres. They don't have access of uh, well, 12 feet, so 3.6 metres. Right. Um, town Lane is over intensified already. Norfolk County Highways have said if it was a public road, it wouldn't be approved. Um, the dust, the number of cars using the road now is just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And people are speeding at that. And um, the, so the dust that's generated from that is. And it, it's another application which was, I believe, refused last time as a dual one, so it's just trying time. Can I ask a last question? Season of questions? Yes. That's the private road, isn't it? It's two private roads, actually. Oh, two mm -hmm. private roads. How is it managed by a residents association or do you all chip in a bit every year to maintain it? How does it work? It's it doesn't. Oh, right. <laughs> individuals look after their own, their own piece outside. If you have an enormous pothole in the middle of the road, who who deals with it? Um either Ken and myself or someone. Oh, I see. It's <laughs> with a barrel and some rubble in the Willing 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 hands rather than organisation. I think it's always been that, like, um, as, he, as he says, it's individual property owners on out to the middle of the road, all the way up. Only on the east. On the west side, it's owned by an estate of somebody that's probably long deceased now. It's a complicated lane. Okay, fair enough. I'm sorry I haven't even mentioned it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, 
I was told that Fleur Developments had claimed part of the road in front of their development. That's, that's Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, on the first development of Bishy, but they've retained the ownership of the road where right they're the whole width of it, isn't it? No, only to the centre of the road because they can't play. That's what I mean. Yes. The whole width of the left hand side. Yes. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Kirsty? Um, this is just a general comment, really. Um, but um, I think we need to protect our night skies. You put that post on about the dark skies festivals. Mm -hmm. Some of the recent houses near me have floodlights on, dawn till dusk. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's something that people need to take into consideration and have in the plan. But I've not looked at the fine details to whether that's part yeah. of the application. Remember, we, we, we're going to consider three different properties here. So, are there any to, any any comments about any of the other two, Dormy House and the? Can I just suggest that yeah. the, the dark skies things? Um, would it be worth me putting on an agenda in future that we should mention that in every application response? Yeah. Well, I thought the, the planning officer had stated that um, they were going to make it a condition. That all outside lights be pointing downwards and not well, whether that's happened or not, I don't know. I think if we, if we read so it, I'll, I'll look into yeah, that. If we read it as a policy, then we'll yeah. just put it as an automatic response. Yeah. It makes it easier. Maybe an agenda item. Yeah. Yes, an agenda item. Anybody else want to say anything about those residential properties? No. Okay, so let's discuss them one by one. Uh, we'll consider first of all the um, single story rear extension at Lark, Skylark Ninefield House, Farm Cottages, Brankester. Does anyone want to say anything from the council on that? No objection from me. It will get through. No objection. No? Any objections to that? No objections. No. Okay. We have no problem with that. Number two, replace the caravan dwelling and additional property access Westley 19 Town Lane, Brankester Stead. Anybody like to speak on this? Tom? Yeah, uh, I, I actually, I think it's overdevelopment. I read it quite hard the other day, and I think it's overdevelopment, and I think it's, as uh, my team put it up, it's trying it off, and I think it's wrong, and I think the road, and I think it's uh, antisocial to uh, to the other residents of the area, and I think it's, uh, it's overdevelopment. Yeah. Anybody else want to speak as on this? Steve said, um, it, it was refused at the first. Um, <coughs> the, the, on, on the first application that was refused, there was no mention whatsoever of a caravan. That's all of a sudden appeared. So I, I would say object to it. Yeah. Uh, what worried me about this application is that we have we have a, a building that wants to build two extra buildings in the garden. And on this application, we have no idea how big, how many bedrooms these buildings have, any details about them, and they only have two parking spaces each. And so I would object on that. On that, I don't think they have enough parking. I don't think there's enough room for those those houses there. I, I agree, Mr. Chair. I, I, I don't think they've got to be um, just. Um, even one or two bedroom dwelling for the hookup. So you could have a um, three or four cars in each property. Yeah. And a boat and whatever else. Mm -hmm. um, and that really just can't take it like that. Well, they're going to end up again as holiday places. We don't want any more holiday places. Well, we can't, we can't make that, that assumption. We can't make that assumption. But I think there are many voices who think that perhaps, I think maybe, anybody else want to say anything on this before we actually vote on it? Um, it's, it's just more properties in a small space, over yeah. development. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not to, uh, Is there, can we have a vote on refusing this from the council on the basis of overdevelopment? Yeah. All of those in favour? You know, that's... Yeah. Okay. With reference to parking inside the property. Because it is an outline application, isn't yeah. it? Well, I just think it's over the full stop. Parking fee added is sugar on top. But Num okay, number three, E, the replacement windows in flat 18, Dormy House, Lancaster. Are there any comments from the council on this? 
Yeah, I believe there's a recent um, ruling, or maybe I could be right on this, where these are um, cradle windows. I think it's a conservation area, they have to stay behind. They've got to stay. Well, they'd have to replace them with cradle windows. Yeah. They, they can't go to plastic or... They can't go to plastic, they're not timber. No, it says it's, they're going to be timber and double glazed and painted. Yeah, but they've got to be crittle. Crittle windows have come a lot cleverer than just the steel and glass that we used to be. They keep the same look, but in an attempt to try and insulate homes better, they've now become double glazed and all that kind of thing. So they're a lot cleverer than they used to be, compared to what it's like in your youth. <laughs> 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 so, what are you saying? If they're, if they're double glazed, crittle windows, then yes, I don't have a problem. It's the style we're talking about rather than manufacturing. Um, if they've got to be replaced with something else, then no, because it's in a conservation area and the windows should stay. Have you looked at the, at the yeah. pictures of them? Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't show anything. The pictures don't really tell you what they're doesn't tell you what it is. Well, in the, in the application there were photographs and there, were, there was a long detailed thing uh, with the photographs and then <clears> I was actually going to compliment whoever put it in with the amount of details they put in about three windows, but... Well, I, I would... Uh... I wouldn't object because windows have to be replaced. You know, that's a fact of life. I propose no objection. Mm -hmm. I second that. And vote on that. No objection. Those in favour of no objecting to this. I don't know. Abst abstaining. Abstaining. Okay. Yeah, I'll vote we'll against because you know okay. it isn't. Um, okay. It's a bit of a fish. I'd like to see some more detail about what they're, what they're doing, having come up against a situation like this um, in work life. Uh, windows need replacing. They, they, so, you know, I've got no problem with windows being replaced. We could do with some more detail. Well, there was detail on the application. The thing is, I can only print a certain amount of stuff. Yeah, that's okay. okay. Is that, is that, I said we, 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 we've said no objection, haven't we? Yeah, majority. Both. All right. Oh, okay. All right, so now we're going to come on to our commercial considerations. And the first is the application seasonal erection of a temporary building, so it's retrospective application by the White Horse. And I understand that we have some purpose here representing the White Horse. Uh, would you like to have some three, your three minutes to speak about this? I would, thank you. Okay. Um, first of all, yeah. I would like to say that I agree on everybody in our comment, good or bad, and yeah. it's very healthy. However, looking at some of the objections, apart from making me feel like public number, public enemy number one, I feel they haven't understood exactly what I'm doing. Uh, they should study them more. Uh, because at the end of the day, we're, we're restoring capacity in the car park the original, and we are reducing the capacity in the bus. Mm. I would now go on to a meeting, a previous incident, and there's nothing to do with this committee here tonight. Six, Sixteen years ago, when we applied to reduce the size of the White Horse, we'd, we'd have originally been allowed a three-story building. We wanted to go two, we couldn't afford it, therefore we had to apply for commission again. And the chairman opened the meeting, once again, public enemy number one. Mr. Cliff Nye has had enough out of this village. I strongly recommend we reject the application. To be pointed out by a councillor that can you in fact study or read the application, and the chairman said, no, I have to use the That's my first point. Okay, well, you've only got three minutes, so three, use it wisely. Carry on, carry on. My second point. My second point, I don't want to talk to about Park, about the traffic, that's the big one. I'm not going to go into the pros and cons, there's loads and loads of that. I was here, I've been here for 60 years, I know the traffic, I knew the road, when there were a few cars on it, and it was a 70 mile hour race track. That doesn't happen now. Congestion, not everybody loves congestion, but it has the overall effect of calming the traffic. Slower traffic and safer, level of benefit. <laughs> Third point, I would like to talk about the. Um, I've got, um, 
the boss. I've been accused by some people of creating an eyesore on the marsh. Uh, lots and lots of comments about this eyesore, and I'd like to point out that there are other eyesores on the marsh. There is a, a, an abandoned seven and a half ton supermarket lorry on the marsh, 30 metres from the road and 150 metres from the, from the coast path and only 150 metres from the car park. No one's mentioned that. My fourth point is being a landlord. I have to put up with an awful lot. And I do put up with people walking down there treating it as a public right of way, which is not. I do put up with some of these people telling my customers they're on wrong, they're on land that doesn't belong to the White Horse. I do put up with people damaging my car and my family's car with keys. I have to put up that that's the name of the game. But I do not like being accused of not caring for the village. That's my point. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Well, I'm within, very sorry am I to hear. Three? Uh, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. <laughs> uh, I'm very sorry to hear that your family has experienced that because I would hate to think happened on that two cars. happened on two cars. Right. I'm very sorry to hear that. I don't think that's very much. Um, anyone who wants to hear. All right. We're now opening this up. Would anybody else like to speak about? the um, proposals at Whitehorse. So as I understand it, and Cliff, you can, you can correct me if I'm wrong, at the moment we have the temporary marquee that was in response to COVID. And we all understand that many businesses have had a hard time during COVID, and you came up with a creative solution, and that was great. Moving forward, because that was under the 56-day rule, you have to come up with something that is a more permanent situation. What I would like to ask, and I couldn't find it anywhere in your application, is what is the amount of covers with the new smaller marquee at the side and the open seating areas? What are the number of covers, including your restaurant, that you will be then serving? And that would also include your um, residential. I can't precisely ask them the question, but I know a man who can. It's about 100 million. 100 so 100 million. million. If, every, if every table was max capacity, which it won't be, but it'd be about. I don't know. You're very popular. You've been on the papers and everything. So, so it's 180 people can all eat at the White Horse at one time. And how many in this new marquee at the side? Oh, no, that's included. That's included. Yeah, I know. But what, I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get to is without the marquee, how many is it? And with the, the extra money. 120 with other markings on a pre COVID. Right, on a pre COVID basis. Yeah. It's, 100 about 60, it's, it's going to add on about 60 covers. It will add on about 60 covers. Okay. So that's about 30 more cars. If you say that most people come in twos, well, maybe say um, 25, you're 20, you're not sure. So not about sure, 20 yeah. more cars. Okay. All right. So as you know, Parking is probably the biggest issue we have at the moment in this village. And for me personally, I think in order to approve something like this, there has to be some kind of overflow parking suggestion. Because we all live in a village. We know at lunchtime, by about 12, your car park gets full. And then people are over on, on the road. And I know at the beginning of the summer, we had a meeting and we were hoping that there was going to be a field open so that you could then have a sign saying overflow parking up there. What I would like to see is in this application, some kind of planning for how you're going to do that. If you're going to add another, if we're going to add another 20 cars because we're going to assume everybody else, everybody's going to come back to the White Horse inside without the COVID restrictions, then you're going to add on to that, say another 20 cars. But you've got the, you're going to have 50, you've got 54 spaces, right? Uh, 54 spaces capacity, yeah, is your capacity. Then we, there has to be there has to be some kind of planning <coughs> about what you're going to do with those cars. Could I? Yeah. Um, just uh, just to follow on from Jazz uh, pointing cars, where do your staff park? 
offside. Right? Is that is that part of their contract with employers? No, it's part of our instruction to them. A recommendation. A recommendation. Uh, offside, do you mean roadside? Roadside, we've been allowed to park tent in the village hall, which we've the village hall hall. Right, so it was right. We rent a couple of properties for staff housing, which they park on as well. There's one ground down in, there's one at the close, and there's three spaces on the car park as well. That's one car park. Right, and is that, does that cover all your staff cars? The majority, because we do encourage car sharing now, with time. Okay, but... Because we have staff housing. Basically, my point is, the 54 uh, slots you have a moment are for clientele only. Yes. And that is not always observed, I accept that point, but it's intended. <coughs> On your application, you have two options here. You're marquee A, I assume, in the time of COVID, and marquee B, in the time of no COVID. So where are we at now? Where are we at now? We are COVID. Still. So you're, okay, fine. So you, so basically, uh, so are you looking for a movable feast, effectively? Are you looking to be able to alternate between COVID tents and non-COVID tents? No, we are, we're on the assumption that COVID will disappear eventually. So you effectively, so effectively are, are, your application is for the no-COVID tent, the smaller tent. If COVID still exists, we will still have a smaller tent, but we can have a, a vast reduction in the We'd have to go back to uh, distance, so distance. Yeah, well, fair enough. But uh, the fundamental your application is the no COVID tent rather than the COVID tent. I think it's both, actually. Which is well, unusual. that's why I try to get the bottom It's an unusual application. It's going to be two alternatives there. Right, well, I think uh, so. Effectively, you're applying for the larger tent. No, the smaller tent. Yeah. Because the large tent will disappear. You can't apply for either or, you have to apply for one or the other. I appreciate that. But the large tent will disappear regardless. So you are applying, this application we're discussing now is for the smaller tent. For the smaller tent. And how many covers, young man, is that in? 60 at max capacity. In the, li in the little tent? Yeah. And in the big tent? COVID 60, without COVID 90. Right, okay. Okay, fine. So we're applying for the little tent. Right. Thanks. Anybody else? Anybody? Um, may I ask, is there a turning area at the end of the car park? Like yes, park, there's plenty of turning area. The people think they're parking, but there is place to the turn, so they can't get in and out. It's not shown. The parking spaces take up any turning area that might be down there. I think it I'm guessing it would show a between car parks. Either booth, I would guess it would be between 30 and 40 feet. I'm guessing. But there would be a different place to turn. Uh, so we get delivery vehicles down as well. Is that the distance? Have a, have a look. Yeah. That, that's at least 40 feet down there. Yeah. I think, I think, um, I think uh, we did. Uh, I know that Celia and I both read all the objections, and you know, I had to compliment you. Did you did a very good PR campaign? Um, but we were really interested in the people who actually live here and what they thought, rather than your customers. We know you well, have. There, were, uh, there are some people who live here as well. Yeah. Oh no, I know. No, 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 no. no. And we, we totted them up, and we gave, we gave them that. Um, but my point before about. Did they fully understand some of the objections? I don't think they did. Well, we do because we've, we've studied it very carefully. So, I, do you have any response to my concerns of, of, of providing off site parking because of this? Because with 180 covers, 54 spaces is not going to be enough. Well, existing normal business can be covers without the terrace, with the outside of the terrace. 120, 130. Well, I take this one. I, I, yeah. I think, you know, you are aware that we're obviously been working on the car parking in both villages. Uh, once we come to got our agreements and things, we're actually looking at a county council inserted parking scheme, which would involve, involve proper enforceable WL lines and things like that. 
and it's not encouraging. You may so, but the point is that you could then, you know, so my point is, this is a good time for you to try and get your car parking sorted out. Because if it's not sorted out, and we start putting within our scheme, we will sort it out for you. And that may not be to your liking. So I suggest it's a good opportunity for you to take the first step and look at it. We were hoping that soft side car parking would go, but unfortunately it didn't. Right. But we would have contributed to that. Right, I know, and I think, I think that's a discussion that the Whitewash should have with other landowners here. Um, so, fully, fully support and carry Yeah, so my proposal would be that we don't, uh, that I, I wouldn't want to accept this until I saw some plan, some concrete plan for getting the cars parked in a separate place. That's where I would be. Because we do want to encourage people in, in business here. We do think it's a valuable asset, but we are very concerned about that. Any other councillors? I think, Chairman, that we, we really ought to think about the eyesore situation as well, trying to resolve that problem somehow. You mentioned that there were other side eyesores there, so it doesn't matter if there's another one there. You didn't say a tent isn't an eyesore. Uh, it is a bit of an eyesore if it's there permanently. Like that, that and I, I think we, if there are other eyesores there, then that's what we need to do, is to remove those eyesores as well, not to add one more. So there is a little bit of a problem there. Somehow, perhaps you can around it. There's no more of an eyesore than some of the houses in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let, we've got to move this along because we've got a lot on the agenda. Um, so... I can't, I can't influence the removal of the eyesore, right. other than my own. Okay, yeah. alright, so I think, yeah. I, think, yeah. I think I think we have probably as a council given our opinion, yeah. which is, yeah. shall I propose that um, we would like to see additional parking plans with this application? Traffic management. Yeah. Traffic management. Are we going to object to it unless that's corrected? Yes, yes we are. We're going to have to object to it. But we subject, subject to a, plan, um, a traffic, traffic management plan, plan. plan put in place. Yeah. 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 What became of Jason Moore? We can't discuss that. So, all right, great. The proposal is we object unless there's a traffic management plan. Okay, we object, the proposal is we object unless a traffic management plan is in place. Certainly. All those in favour? <coughs> those against? No. Abstainers? I, I, I declare the interest. Right. So what is your interest? What is your interest? Okay. Thank you very much for coming. Did you get me there? Was that state? Yes. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is Saxon Field. So, Tom Winton, could you please step outside? We won't let you in, but. No, we need to be in the room because I don't this is to the, this is an application for a change of use on the land east of one Saxon field and this um, application has got looks like a cafe and one two three what should I write down ten businesses and a cafe um, this is a this is a second application for this site. Are there any members of the public who would like to say anything about this application? Yes, Kirsty. Um, we've already got a problem with parking, gridlock, um, and safety. So if we've got another business bringing in an influx of even more people, um, that would be a big, great cause for concern. Have you read our neighbourhood plan, Kirsty? Uh, not in detail. Okay, I suggest you do because one of the points in the neighbourhood plan is that we actually want to encourage small businesses in the village. So, 
it would be useful for you to, to just read it. And I'm not saying that, that, that but I just think it's, it's really useful to read that. Any other councillors? Yes, Beth. Um, I'm not sure that there's enough power here for the number of units and for the traffic that those units will bring. Any other members of the public? Members of council? Yes, Chris. Yeah, I've read the, um, the whole blurb on this on the um, website. And as much as I would like, possibly, small industrial units, if you read the historic England paperwork, this is not got to go through. Um, it's got to go before the Secretary of State, and historic England are saying they can tell them not to um, pass it and all the rest of it. But four pages on the whole thing, and basically, whatever we say, it isn't got to go through, mm -hmm. I'm afraid, because it is on a historical site. Yes, I read that too. It's part of the, the Brandingham uh, archaeological site. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry? That's the No, that's actually separate, isn't it? Because I looked at that. No, that, that, that was part of the Roman fort, but because it had mitigating circumstances like dwelling in small local people, that was allowed under some real subsection A, subsection whatever it was. Because this is like industrial, they will not allow it to go through. All right, my, my concern with this is that there are 34 parking spaces for 10 businesses and a cafe. And I agree with that. I don't think there are enough parking spaces. Uh, we know if you look at uh, very successful trade orchards, for example, um, that when you build it, they will come. And uh, I think there needs to be more parking. And I think also consideration one toilet for 10 businesses and a cafe, I don't think is adequate. So I, I would object to this. I'd also like to say, I do, I do appreciate that Tom has moved the parking spaces away from the houses at Saxon Field. And you know, presumably you would want a screen of trees or something there to help the residents in, in Saxon Field. But, I don't. I don't feel in this um, in this form that I would be able to support this application. You, can, you can't have. Um, I would have thought if they're going to be separate businesses, you can't have one toilet. You've got, you've got each, each unit has got its own toilet. It doesn't it have to. No, it doesn't have to. It's based on the number of people working in the building, uh, but that does not meet health, safety, and welfare regulations. Mm -hmm. One toilet, that's nowhere near. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you that. Who's going to be responsible for cleaning the damn thing? Well, that's <laughs> Tom's problem. That's, that's Tom's problem. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> that is the landlord's problem. You don't clean toilets. Yes. This, uh, the red line is obviously the field, is it? Yeah. It yes. to me like the space for the number 30 on. Parking space, is there? Yes, there is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But it's just, this is how it's been laid out and presented to us. So well, the, if they put another 30 in. Yes, Celia? Uh, at the, when the last uh, plan was presented, the residents of Saxon Field were most concerned about how close the yeah. parking was and yeah. the building was and everything. I think this is to appease the residents of Saxon Field. No, I'm talking about this boundary. Yeah. Not that boundary, this boundary. Right. Oh, you mean that boundary? Yeah, the, the red line is the boundary of the whole field. Yeah, of course. You mean the south boundary? You mean the south boundary? Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. 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 Um, is there anyone on the council who would like to support this objection? Support this, well, this, this application? Chairman, I think, too, there's a, a question on materials. Does anybody know what materials this is made of? It's in a housing area with flints and all that yeah. sort of thing. Are they building it in that sort of mode, or is it industrial? They changed it into brick and flint on the outside. But there's a very, very big roof area. But there's a big roof area. And what is that? Tunnel. 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 All right, so I'm going to propose 
but we object to this on the grounds of parking and health and safety. Mm. Mm. And an archaeological site which is going to be turned out anyway. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I've proposed that. Do I have a seconder? I'll second that. Alright. All in favour? Any against? No, sorry. Sorry. All in favour? Of what? Sorry. Of right. uh, objecting. Well, we've done that. Yeah, but sorry, I didn't see anything. Is there anyone against objecting? Four. Well, that's four. 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 Yes, absolutely. Can we do that? Yes. yes. We think it's an improvement on the PSC. Keep working. Keep working. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right, let's get Tom in. Uh, can you give me a seat Then the next one, everybody, everybody's putting in applications this, this month. It's a labour application ship. Uh, the next application is a reapplication from the ship. Um, and um, I'm delighted that the new application doesn't have any hot tubs. <laughs> Those of you who were here before will remember there were four hot tubs that were going to be put in the back garden. I personally don't want that. Right. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak about this new application for the ship? <laughs> yes, because it's new, we've not seen it. Thank you very much. So we've done another Thank you very much, Val. Of course, you haven't. It's a new application that has just come in. Thank you for pointing it out. I'm going to tell you it, it hasn't changed much, it has changed. We've got the four surfer houses in the old garden of the mill house, and then we have the, um, uh, how many of them are there? We've got the rope lofts, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six rope lofts, which are studio, uh, just single rooms. So we're, there's the addition of the ship of six bedrooms plus the four little houses that are one bedroom houses. And so it's, a, it's an addition of 10 rooms to the ship. And at the moment they have one, two, three, four, I'm going to put this down. Uh, one, They have 20 car spaces, two disabled. And so they want to add in 10, well, 10 rooms on top of that. So again, I'm going to say, there is not enough parking. Exactly. <laughs> and until an application comes in with a parking plan of off-site parking, this is, I, I, mean, I will not be approving it. Anybody else? Well, the next row, however many rooms there's going to be, that's massively over the development. Ten, ten, ten extra, extra ten rooms. Room. Mm -hmm. cool. Because the next door houses that they put in have take up lot of those pub spaces. Yeah. So have we got the restaurant. We have car parking underneath the lofts, so. Yeah, that's that's not a problem because you can get them underneath there out of the way. Right. So that's an extra six. Well, I mean, it's, it's not an extra because that car parking is there already. Right. Yeah. So they've actually maintained that car park. I haven't just lost so any right. ground to car park. So we're not yeah. gaining, but just only yeah. extra car parking yeah. to accommodate mm -hmm. the, the, And uh, these are all horrific. The ones they've drawn are horrific. It's all car parking spaces, too. Things like rain trailers just won't get in. <laughs> We've just criticised the, the white horse. That's right. That's right. We've got to go ahead and object to this. I would also like to see on this where electric charge is going to be as well. I can't see any electric charges here. So, 
Um, is there any, anybody wants to say anything else about it? We've got to go back to the original design without the hot tubs and whatever else. It doesn't improve the car parking. Still, there's car parking, isn't there? There's a car parking. Well, the thing which amazed me is that when I got the papers and looked through it on the website, also I read the county council of the highways to be on this. And they didn't seem to get this necessity for car parking. Mm -hmm. You know, they, and, and I was amazed that they actually said, yeah, we think it's fine. And I just thought, well, okay. But were they going to put the extra cars for the, for the extra, extra space? Yeah. Is it, is it worth asking Andrew if he could actually get an opinion from the highways on why they don't worry about it? I mean, no, uh, only to happen to. Yeah. Which I think it would be useful because they do seem to just say, fine. Yeah. It's bad now, that out of the ship. Yes, it's one of the most congested parts of our village, particularly when the, when the road is built. But also bear in mind, before they built those houses on the front, it had the best car parking of any part in the entire room. Yeah. 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 You know, it was, uh, it was, it was no, no, and actually, with that car parking as it was, they'd have happily accommodated all this, yeah. all this building work. All right, so um, I'm going to put a push on right I'm, I'm going to propose an objection to this on the basis of lack of car parking. Over development. Well, put it there. Over development. Okay. Yes. Over development of car parking. So I've made that proposal. Can I have a seconder? Thank you. All those in favour of objecting? Okay. So I think I think we've sent a message to everybody tonight. Parking is going to serve. Alright, thank you very much. Well, I don't think you realise it's a tourist area. Tourist upside. And we welcome. Alright, um, to receive report on any planning matters. Nothing other than these. Nothing other than these. Okay, perfect. Um, delegated decisions. Um, again, listed on the um, pack, but for reference, it was Fent Cottage. Um, Revisions to the plan and there were no objections to raise. Okay. Okay. Other matters to receive reports from council groups. Has anybody been to a council group meeting this, this month? No? no. Yeah. Uh, to receive a report on Saxon Field Parking. <coughs> Amy and Val. Again, the written one is one of the um, we'd like to start by saying a big thank you to everyone for all their support since we started by the parking and safety team just over a month ago. <coughs> We'd particularly like to thank the Parish Council for underwriting the village car park, and particular thanks to Brian and Chris and Bob who volunteered on several occasions. Also team at the Royal West Norfolk Golf Club who provided all the signage on the entry points to Brancaster. Um, and a big thank you to the landowners who allowed us to put the signs on their, on their land, as well as Tom for allowing us to use the We also want to say a big thank you to the wonderful team of volunteers who gave up their time on the weekends and the days that we were open throughout August. Um, and also Lee and the team at the Beach Car Park who we lay over with on a regular basis. And they, um, they kept us sort of up to date with the Beach Car Park. <coughs> when the road was flooded in order for us to decide when um, we opened the overflow and closed. I'd like to say thank you to Reverend Kirsty for allowing us to put the sign on the railings and also for volunteering at the field. Um, Val has pressured me to thank my husband for cutting the grass <laughs> at the field, which really doesn't need to be said because he's, he's played with a vintage tractor for that. So, uh, And a last thank you goes to Roz. Um, she can't be here tonight, but she has been a central member of our team. She has, among things, coordinated all the volunteers, all the shifts at the car park and the finance side of the, of the Prime Park and Safety Team. Um, just to say what else we've done, we've built an excellent rapport with the beat managers at Hunstanley Police Station. We provided them throughout August with updates about the car park, the times that the beach road was flooded and we asked for extra presence in the area, um, especially at the time when the road was flooded. And we did see them on a couple of occasions at the overflow car park, so we hope they 
they took no. Um, we've been in contact with the Coast Guard of Hans Stanton and the Wales Supply Search and Rescue Team actually commented on Facebook the other day to say that they thought the roads in Brancaster had, had, had seen a difference on the road. So, um, Also with Andrew Jameson, we've, we've had discussions with him and he's invited us to join a stakeholder group which involves all the relevant organisations which we are delighted to be a part of. We've spoken to highways on several occasions and met them at the field and we've also been in contact with the bus company who's provided us with updates when they struggled to get through and we had an email from the other day to say they haven't had any problems recently, particularly on the weekend that we were the most busiest in the overflow car park. So we hope there's something there. We're also in discussions with James Wilde, um, MP and Stuart Dark from the Kings and the West Norfolk Borough Council. And obviously you might have seen some articles that have been written about us in various publications. Um, our Facebook group we set up as a place to post information such as the tide times, flooding and the parking, as well as being somewhere for us to update everybody on our initiatives. We pinned a link at the top to the tide times um, and each time a tide is due to flood the road we also do a post for that as well. Um, we went live on the 1st of August and by the end of the month we had 800 members and in Throughout August, we had a total of 13,257 people visit our group. We asked um, if anyone wants to comment or post for the first time, what brings you to Brancaster? A lot of the replies have been holiday, which for us demonstrates our group is reaching not just local residents, but people further afield. Some of our posts in particular reached a substantial amount of people, both who were members and non-members. The one that was put out for the bank holiday weekend reached over 20.6 thousand people. The Brankster Beach Road flooding, where I went for an evening walk, reached over 18.6 thousand people. And the access to Brankster Beach with a photo looking down Mill Hill explaining why you're in the queue reached over 17.8 thousand. So it's showing that our group is getting out there and um, we are hoping to make a difference and our values to some of the <laughs> just been talking about, we decided that we needed at least three initiatives on the basis that um, the larger the initiative that you're trying to set up, then there's likely to be a, a greater chance that you don't achieve what you're hoping to. So we decided on the Facebook page, adequate signage and information leaflets on the basis that the reason we thought that we were getting the kind of congestion that we're getting and gridlock that we're getting is because people don't have the information about the tides, how they operate, when they operate, and what needs to happen. Um, and the final one, one was a temporary village car park, which more or less fell into our lap, we were trying to say. So the car park opened on 11 days throughout August, we had customers on five of those days, and the main six, we waited until the village car park looked like it wouldn't fill, or be flooded, by, or, or the road be flooded, um, and, and so we waited for it, was, uh, for it to be accessible before we closed it. Um, our goal wasn't to fill the car park, it was to provide the provision of a car park if it's needed. Our goal was to give people information so that they don't come at times when we can't cope with them. Um, we recruited, at really short notice, 28 volunteers um, and we ran four shifts a day, uh, so that's a minimum of 10 to 12 people a day that we needed. Um, and we only closed the car park because we didn't need it rather than because we didn't have the number of volunteers. So once again, a big thank you to the volunteers because it made a huge difference to, to everybody in the village. Many of us were anticipating difficult conversations because we'd already had them with people coming to the village as they were parking inappropriately uh, and so on. But actually, what we found was that our, our, our welcoming approach actually had us being had able to have a good rapport with people. People were thanking us uh, for making, providing the provision and saying how lovely it was to come to such, such a welcome. 
Um, and I think the other thing to know, especially if you think you might volunteer this weekend, um, is that um, we had a nice time as volunteers because we had a chance to spend time with people that, whose paths we might not usually cross. Um, and so in the two and a half hour shift, we got to know each other. Uh, and that was, that was a, a nice thing to come out of it with friendships and, and bonds that we already did not already have. In total, we had 124 cars parked. People were mainly wanting to walk to the beach, but some used it as a base to walk the coastal paths, to walk into Stays, or into, into, into Brancaster Village, um, and, and just to do the walk, shop, and have a meal. Um, and, um, and get the bus back. <laughs> um, which was a great, great piece of advertising for people using buses. Um, in addition to those at the park, there were some that we provided a stopgap for. If they were half an hour or an hour away from the road being cleared or the, the beach car park opening, uh, we gave them that information and said, but you can hang out here if you want for that time and then you'll be able to get them down to the beach. And that worked, that worked for them too. Um, we asked, for need to, need to yep. wrap we asked for donations, we collected £268. Pounds. And the final thing is, we are open again this weekend. High tides are expected at the most busy time of the day. Um, and there's, when I last looked, there was still a decent weather forecast for the weekend. But we don't have enough volunteers. There's not <coughs> enough volunteers who <coughs> come on holiday um, because they delayed their plans to be able to, to work as volunteers. So we're, we're now facing a shortage of people. If you feel you can offer, that would be great. Please, please either contact us through our Facebook group, which is, um, what is it? Just Brands Park and Safety Team. Brands Park and Safety Team. <laughs> or through our um, email address, which is Brands Park and Action Group at gmail.com. Great. I would like to propose a thanks, a vote of thanks to um, Val, Amy and Bernard um, Rollers and all their little elves. Um, you can ask yourselves an elf then. Uh, I don't need to quiz me on that. I need to do a lot. I, I, I second I'm going to say that's a good picture. And also, <laughs> if we get this um, car parking thing sorted out, if they are willing, I would like to put those three in charge of the new parking arrangements when we get them possibly next year, if they will accept. Could we just talk about that? We need to. We need to. I'm putting it in there. Okay, but I think we'd all love to give this car park team a huge <coughs> thank you. So Okay. Uh, <laughs> receive a report on possible parking plans that is still in the works. I'm hoping to bring you something at our next meeting. Um, the next item, HD, and uh, consider approving the map for the agreement with the National Trust and subsequent wording changes, which is what we were talking about earlier in the evening. So the map, I hope every councillor has the map in front of them now. It's the map of the village greens, and this is a map that we need, that we are proposing those with the agreement with the National Trust. And it is only this map that is allowed to be with that agreement. There's no other map to be considered, only this map to be that agreement as part of that agreement. I'd also like to point out that this map is a definitive map from County Hall. No other map is actually legal, regardless of what people might say. Okay. This is just a bigger version of what you've got. Right, okay. Which you all heard. Mm -hmm. So, it, for the public, it shows, if you, if you looked on the website, it shows the village greens that are around the hard. Mm -hmm. 
So um, the roads are not part of the village green? Yes, they are. They are. They are. But they've been fenced away from it. Only the surface. It, it, it's one of those um, silly anomalies. If you go back far enough, the main road going down to the hard, if you like, was a track. Sometime in the early 1900s, I should imagine that was tarmacked over, and it's been like that ever since. But there is a, an actual ruling whereby a village green, or um, a road going over a village green can, can be a village green. I thought so, yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you well, are. it's not mapped as such on this map. No. no. It's, it's, not, it's not on there as such, but the, if you, to save an argument, the whole lot is village green. Yeah. And I agree with that. And they put that, and they actually put, there was a track went down there, obviously, to the horses and carts. That was turned into a tarmac. And the left hand one has remained a track over the con, which is common land. Yeah, yeah this I mean, agree green. with what you said. Yeah. Okay. Which is what you were trying to get into last time. I think, I think fundamentally, we're all in agreement, so. And just to make it clear. Can I ask for clarification? Who actually maintains the roads? Is it highways? Highways maintain the The map is intended for the agreement as to who maintains what. If highways are doing it, then that... Right, highways maintain the tarmac route. Yeah. Right. The gravel track is maintained by... question mark. The, the National Trust, I assume, because they are the alleged elements. And, and through the agreement with the parish council. So and this, this, this is what I was arguing about. Councillor Thompson brought all that up about rules and all the rest, and nobody will listen to you. And no, we, could I ask, is there a triangle a bit at the entrance to this? I don't think there is, I think it's a single track. Ah, ah. no then. <laughs> Go back far enough when Reggie Kendall was there, right? And the book the left hand side, you went down the steps, along a bit of tarmac, and into his door to get your meat. That has since been grassed over. Yes. But it was never that triangle. But it was, no, it, it does create a triangle. It, it, does, create, it does create a triangle, which is there now. It's the convenient access to the So basically what you can do is you can ignore that triangle where that little piece of road is. It's not. It is. It's over up, it's over up over, so the triangle's gone. It's gone that way. Basically it's reverted back to the village green. And is the building, uh, the the uh, National Trust building on common land as well. What, the Dial Yes. Yes. No, it's on the village green, not on the village green. Village green. Yes, but it's on, the, it's on the common land. Is it on the village green? No. Possibly, if you go back far enough, possibly yes. Well, it's not, it's not on the village green on this. Well, we have to argue about that. We are, we are talking about the present, the present, Bits. Okay. So, with this map, the wording needs to be changed in the agreement with the National Trust, um, and it needs to be changed from this agreement covers the area in red and gaps next to the red other than highways, etc., but does not include the yellow strip on the east side, which is leads to the sailing club. We need to get rid of that. Get rid of all that. And we need to put in this agreement cover covers village greens. 47 and 63, as outlined on the attached map. And it, it makes no comment about who owns or anything like that. It's it's simply who is actually maintaining it for purposes of the well, agreement. I, yeah, for the purpose of the agreement, highways maintain the tarmac road, and the gravel track is maintained by Paris County and National Trust. Whatever. You need to add VG65 and the two. Yeah, why is. I was just looking at that. V, yeah, VG65 is to add. Is that not 60? That's a bad three. Or is that a bad three? That's a bad three. Oh, it's a bad three. I wouldn't bet on that. That is 63. No, there, there are really two village greens down there. We have 47 and 63. All right. Yeah. Okay. So and it's continuing. It's continuing. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to propose. Before you propose anything, my lady chair. Uh, this business, of this, uh, let me just get something straight for the members of the parish here. This piece on the on the east side, which was 
allegedly leased out to the Siren Club, was totally illegal. Well, it was, well, there's no good going back in history, but the fact of it was the parish council had been cutting it for decades, the Siren Club couldn't use it, and the whole thing was a complete mess. All we've been trying to do is to get things onto a legal foot. Right. And now, from the what I've been told from the National Trust, they're now going to sort that out for the benefit of the parish and the Siren Club and the parishioners. So we got a level plan bill and so much. Stephen, you need to provide that email to the parish. Well, I, I can do. I can you do. do. I, 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 I try to be straight and. Well, All right, okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to make a proposal that the wording needs to be changed as I, as I as listed on the agenda and we are going to attach this map to the agreement with the National Trust. Subject to a written statement from the National Trust to say they will get rid of the lease. No, that's not part of this. That is not well, what's on the agenda. Let's just get around the table of the National Trust and sort one out finally, once and for all, instead of all this rubbish. What we I'd like to take a vote on. Stephen, I'd ask for some respect here. Um. What I'd like to... I'd like to get some respect, please. What I'd like to vote on, Rob, do you need to say something? No. Okay. What I'd like to vote on is that this map is attached to the agreement with the National Trust as agreed at the pre previous uh, meeting with the wording changed to say that this agreement covers uh, Village Greens 47 and 63. Do I have a seconder? Can, uh, can we please explain why to the public exactly why this has been going on? Be very brief. Um, Stephen, I'm I don't know that at this point we can take public debate. Well, this, is, to I this is quite significant. Let me ask the clerk, are we... It's up to you and the councillors. Stiffy, I will allow you two minutes. Could you explain to me what date that map is? 1906. Has it got an amendment on that map? So when they changed the direction of the road <laughs> and made a compulsory purchase order the 14 feet of the village green in 1963 for the route widening scheme that went past Tom's granary originally along Reggie Campbell's wall they turned around and took 14 feet of green that was the village green for a compulsory purchase order 30 feet and my father's hat orchard that is now sea glass on the opposite side of the road, Leicester Sutherland, God rest his soul, his front garden, have they amended that map to turn around and put that in the public highway, which is why the council turned around and maintained the road that used to go down to the Silent Club flat. They put a bloody great ramp in there and curbstone down as far as the boundary of the old victory boat that was gone. Mm -hmm. Have they amended that map to turn around and show that they've taken 14 feet to village green? Stevie, is that? <coughs> that, is, that is the 1906 <coughs> definitive map from County Hall. That is the legal basis of it being a common. It's the village green. Sorry, apologies, mate. Um, for it being that, that status of land. Um, and it's the only one that we can accept in terms of any legal. Correct. I, I think if I, members of the public, what's happened is that the previous agreement we have with the National Trust, which was done in 19 something, 19. okay, basically needed updating. <coughs> so it was simply the National Trust and the parish council together have always managed the village green, effectively. And we had to update it because it was a muddle out of date and various things like that. And this is what we're going through now. We made a lot of progress. We just tied up the loose ends of this map, which uh, is a defensive map from well, the Well, we see that, that front green triangle, which is the British Green 47, half of that has been taken into the public highway now. I would like to point that out to the meeting. So you're actually fighting over a British Green that's actually under about four foot of tarmac. Well, we can only go by what that is. 
Well, no, 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 unless, no. You, unless that's your hiking route, unless you move on, which none of these which none of these have. have. No. You're actually contesting whether you're actually on a piece of green that's actually there anymore. The width of the line on these no, things is about 10 minutes. We need to go. Yeah, but you're actually to turn around and contest with something you haven't actually got. We much. need to go. With all due respect. Yeah, no, we need to. Thank you very much. Could, could we uh, vote to accept this map now and ask the county council to update their definitive maps? They can. That is a definitive map in law. Yes, well, they need to update it to what it is now. It's no good having a definitive map that is 100 years old, which doesn't represent the definitive area. Right? Can I move on? To our to investigate. Yeah. Because I, my, my view is that, that they won't do anything. There'll need to be a public inquiry and probably a uh, high court will involved as well. Mr. Chairman, if I can come on this, do we really need to split all these hairs? Well, we're trying to get something straight for everybody. All we need to do is work together between us, the National Club, and the Silent Club, and Borough Council, if you like, get round a table and thrash something out and cut out all this rubbish and all the stuff which is illegal. Is illegal. I agree, and that's what we're trying to do, is to get this agreement signed and updated. And we've been going past this round and round. So I am going to propose that we approve this map to be the definitive map for the new agreement between the Brancaster Parish Council and the National Trust with the amended wording as I have read out twice so far. Well, I second it. All those in favour for accepting this map and the, this map with the wording change please vote. Six. Six. I'm not signing. Those against? Well, I'm, I'm against until we have a round the table for. So you're against, talk. Stephen? Chris? I'm against because um, I want to see the um, paperwork from the National Trust and then I want to read it. Okay. Um, see you. Uh, I'm concerned that we're agreeing to it without actually having a final draft of the agreement to do that. Alright, the, the, the motion has passed. So six, three, three objections. Three objections. Okay. Alright. <coughs> so, council matters. Thank you make a statement. Uh, to Simon Bauer, 1st of September, we the undersized councillors are outraged and saddened. The participation of fellow councillors Stephen Bocking and Chris Cockney in the planning of an unlawful camp out protest which took place in Brancaster over the holiday weekend. The police have documentary evidence that they were part of the organising team. In our standing orders, 3B, councillors commit to protect, enhance, and promote the environment of the area of the parish council and to promote the collective interests and well-being of all the residents of the parish of Brancaster. On the advice of Mel, we were enacting Standing Order 16A1X, and we call for a vote of no confidence in both Stephen Bocking and Chris Cotton, and if it is carried, ask for consideration that their membership on council groups be withdrawn. And that was signed by Brian e. Bax, Tom DeWinton, John Wareham, Bob Lawton, Jeremy Thompson, Richard Roberts, and Gary Bocking. I'd like to also say that there was an email received from John Wareham, but we know the support for this. Um, Chris and Stephen, it, it gives me absolutely no pleasure at all to do this. Well, you're the one who's doing it. You're the one who started it. So I would like to give you both three minutes. I will. I, I always got to cut a lot of this out. I will, I'll read the whole thing now. Since, yeah. When they've both spoken, can I have this? So yes, you may. When this came about, I started putting together evidence in my defence. Right? But then I thought, in, in defence of what? It's a civil matter. What part of this doesn't our chairperson understand? When we first attended a parish council, 
together, she said to me, Stephen, you must look at me like Switzerland, neutral. Neutral Switzerland sent 30,000 Jews back from the borders to die in concentration camps. And now we have, we have this quiet, neutral person trying to, to get two councils off the parish council for what? Standing up for the freehold property rights or just standing up to the golf club for a fair deal for the, for the common right holders and the parishes historical long-standing claim to the ownership of Marsh Common. All the Royal West Norfolk needs to do is to produce the deeds, but instead ordinary people receive solicitor's letters, solicitor's letters, threatening with dire consequences. Now this demonstration, this group, the Landers Oz, came here to support common right holders clients. They travelled from all corners of England at their own expense. They were all educated, peaceful people and all had jobs. Ask yourself the question, who started these rumours about blockading the car park entrance and thousands of protesters? Ask yourself the question, was this chairperson acting out of concern the parish of Brancaster or concerned for the Royal West Norfolk Golf Club. I did, note, I did notice there was not the same concern over the chaos at Stave Harbour over the same weekend. I had this note, I had this note put through my door, ambered, with a con contact on the back for the Eastern, for the EDP journalist on the back of it. This was, a, was this an attempt to come between man and wife? Remember, remember, Brancaster Commons Committee is virtually bankrupt, and yet thousands of pounds are taken off these commons every year for what? Certainly not for commons management. This small local problem seems to encapsulate the world's problems, which is fueled by man's greed and drinks parties. And that's my statement. Thank you very much, Stephen. Yeah, thank you. Um, <coughs> would you like to make your statement, please? Um, I agree with what Stephen said. Plus, as the parish council gave up all claims for ownership in the past, the PC had no involvement in this <coughs> protest. It's a civil matter and nothing to do with the parish at all. Um, there was no email to say there was going to be a Zoom meeting, so on whose authority did the PC get to hold a Zoom meeting? Because we weren't informed, and I don't think anybody else was as well. Speaking to Paula Gilhooley, she is the uh, police liaison person for um, protests and all the rest of it. Um, I asked her about the Zoom meeting, and contrary to popular belief, the police did not organise a Zoom meeting because under their law, they cannot use their computers for Zoom meetings. So Paula said she had to go out and find a non-police computer to hook into the Zoom meeting that um, was being organised. So therefore, the, the, the parish council set up the Zoom meeting, contrary to popular belief, which said Simon Barr and Bryony back to attend the meeting have safety concerns in the parish caused by illegal camping. I suggest they both get down there every night between now and February the 20th, because there will be wildflowers down there jamming around the marsh at night time. Can you, where's this, who's email? It was hosted, from? sorry? Just let him finish. It was hosted on the police team's meeting and attended by representatives. It wasn't hosted on the police team because they're not allowed to. They cannot use PC computers for Zoom meetings like parish council and all the rest of it. Um, the four individuals who are organising this protest have been identified and documentary evidence of this is in the position of, possession of the police. Unfortunately, two of these individuals are parish councillors. I would like to see the evidence of where there is documentary evidence that we helped organise it because we didn't. The police confirmed we didn't. Tony Gosling confirmed we didn't. So who is right? 
Who is Tony Goldman? Um, he organised, he's the uh, part of the TLIA. Um, according to uh, the other. Where is it? Last week I rang um, Paula Vihuli and I got an email from her to say it was lovely to chat with you, and as promised, this email will afford my contact with Mumbai. As we discussed on the phone the protest camp, I attended via Zoom and in attendance with, uh, as police protest liaison officer, although in this case it was held on private land and my interest was only monitoring any tension. I am not aware of any individual organisation which questioned the meetings, but there were representatives from the golf club and other people. Um, as regards the documentary evidence, According to the police, the only documentary evidence they have got is an anonymous letter that went in to say there was going to be a protest there on the car park. Yeah. I asked her if I could have a copy on it, and she said, no, unless you are the author, then that's your property. Okay. Basically, this has nothing at all to do with the parish council. The meeting was not organised, or hoped to organise, or anything else by myself and Mr. Barking. We didn't know until at least about three days before the meeting was actually started. So where all this rubbish has actually come from, I can only guess it is certain people ranting and raving at drinks parties and other places and making a storm out of nothing whatsoever. All right, thank you very much, Councillor Robinson. Can I be able to come back in no, a minute? No, you've had no, a few minutes. I'm going to go to see you. Yeah, go ahead. Right, thank you for letting me have a quick word. I didn't know what I was doing wrong with you because you're going to say. But I, or what you were going to say. But I do think that possibly there is a lot of misinformation flying about. I think that's what it mm -hmm. uses. Would you not, as chairman, Withdraw this so that it can be properly discussed quietly. And if in the future you need to reprimand them or whatever you want to do, bring it forward again when the matter is clear. It's not clear at the moment. You've heard one thing, he's heard another thing. Oh, lots of rumours flying about. And there's one thing that nobody's mentioned this parish council owns a common right. We are common white holders. And don't forget what you mean. So I am respectfully asking you, Bryony, in the case, because of being democratic, that you withdraw this, these two things, and we can go forward as a team to work for the benefit of the whole community, not for any individual part. That's all I'm asking. Thank you very much, Celia. Um, I am, I've taken in what you have said, but I am still going to call for a vote. Can I have another sign before we vote? Or would you rather have me gagged? I don't want to have you gagged no. at all, Stephen. Okay. Well, I've got here. We're talking about the car park, we're talking about common land, right? <coughs> we have this one from the National Trust. I'm writing to advise Shadra that all members have, that the manor, the Frankston Manor is the property of the National Trust. The Royal West Norfolk Golf Club, the Golf Club, are the legal registered owners of the car park. Now how can how many how many owners is that? I think it belongs to the village. We are and I talking. think the village should be having eighty percent or sixty percent of that money. A few years ago I was shut down at the parish council meeting because I wanted thirty three and a third for all of us, which I consider might have been fair. And what happened? Nothing. We got these, we get these. How many how many people have been on that car park and have been 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 fined fifty pounds for parking a car? Because I can't do it. That's, that's totally illegal. Let them do it. Stephen, this is about your participation in oh, the course, yeah, which, which we didn't do or have anything to do with. Prove it. Go ahead. I would like to 
consider a motion of no, no confidence in Stephen Bolton. Those in favour of the vote of no confidence in Stephen Bocking, please raise your hand. Can, can, can I just come in on that? How many of you want a golf club, then? I have to say, you're not. Sorry, I'm, you work I'm trying to keep no, out of don't. this for obvious reasons. Once the vote's been called, we have the vote. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, again, I'm not conversation with her. And I don't issue with golf clubs, by the way. Sorry. I have nothing to do with golf clubs. No. So what are you voting against? I, now, we're coming to the next, I would like to consider a motion of no confidence in Councillor... We need the votes against that motion. So, oh, we need a vote against that motion, sorry. All of those who would like to vote against the motion of no confidence in Stephen Bocking, please raise their hand. Any abstainers? Sorry, I thought we were doing the same again. Sorry. Alright, we will start again because actually yeah. I would like to be a name for them. Okay, we're considering a motion of no confidence in Councillor Stephen Barking. All those in favour of the vote of no confidence, please raise your hand. Is it seconded? Um, it is seconded by Bob, by Bob Lawton. That, that is in the email. All those against? The motion, please raise your hand. Any abstentions, please raise your hand. Motion is passed. I'll have to call you, have to, huh? have to you as an abstention. You want me to vote? <laughs> what, a, yeah. what a farce. Put down whatever you like. Uh, oh, now, Stephen. Stephen. Sorry. Stephen. Sorry. Stephen. Sorry. Stephen. Sorry. Stephen. Sorry. I have to do three out of the council. <laughs> I have to record your vote because the vote was requested. You, so, you put down whatever you like, mate, because I don't, I can't be bothered. I would like to consider the vote of no confidence in Councillor Chris Cotton. All those in favour of the motion, please raise your hand. All those against the motion, please raise your hand. Any abstentions? That is passed. As those have passed, we need now to consider the membership of council groups by the above councillors. Um, just so the public knows, um, there's no way that uh, uh, somebody can be asked to leave a parish council. That's not democratic. But what we can do, because those votes have been passed, is to consider the membership of those councillors in public groups. Um, which are groups representing the council. So we'll just go through this. Uh, Stephen Falking is on the uh, Smith Trust and the Barrow Common Committee, Barrow Common Management Committee. Um, so those were the, those are the two that we'll have to consider. Again. And for Chris, we've got the Detached Cemetery Committee and the, again, the Barrow Common Management Committee and the Brancaster Sports Club. So... Before you say anything else, what difference does it make, because you're doing no confidence in me, what difference does that make with me organising, doing anything with a detached cemetery? It's what difference does that all make to me having anything to do with highways and stuff like that. Absolutely nothing. It makes no difference at all. But if we are voted off on those, you do. somebody's got to do a hell of a lot of work, because mm -hmm. I ain't doing it. Mm -hmm. Neither am I. Okay. That's fine. Plus the fact there is 175 cushions that got to be picked up and taken back to King's Lynn at some stage. I know, I know, I know Chris. I know, and as I said before, this gives me absolutely no pleasure because you are a valued member. Well, then don't do it. Don't do it. You have you yeah. your participation in this illegal action. You say to me about respect. <coughs> respect does earn. You won't earn anything. As far as I'm, and I'll tell you now, I, I take out a, a vote of no confidence of who you as chairman, but that Stephen, isn't worth doing. If you'd like to do that, you, that is your democratic right. Yeah. Yeah. The other you thing is, you're not being all about demo, democratic rights. Right. Right. The other thing you don't do is do something like this in public. 
I don't mind. I got nothing to hide. Hey. My conscience is clear. I can look in the mirror and I'm okay. Alright, we need to move the agenda forward. You move what you like. Okay, thank just, you. Just remember consider that all your members of the golf club are voting all this. Consider membership. And I will add something else as well while we're on. Oh, members, members of the village, village, village golf club, right? That was done in 1902, and without it, there, be, there wouldn't be no village golf club if it hadn't been for common right and common land. Remember that one. All right, we need to consider membership of council groups and set um, The uh, so Stephen Docking, that's the Smith Trust, and the uh, Bank Common Management Committee. Um, and for Chris, it's the sports club and the cemetery um, and the Barra Common Management Committee. Just so that we're clear, it's not the, the Barra Common Heart, it's the, the one up there. So, uh, consider membership of the council groups by five councillors. Does anybody have anything that they'd like to say about that? Well, as I live next door to Barra Common, I'll do the Barra Common. Conflict of interest. Conflict of interest. I agree with Celia, Tom. Right. I think that is a rather. We need to vote on these. We need to vote on these memberships, and then we can figure out who's going to you do them. You do that. Okay, who's going to replace them? Um, so I propose that um, uh, Chris Cotton is. Uh, of the cemetery, the sports club, and very common, and that Stephen Bocking is of the Smith Trust and the very common management committee. That's the proposal. Do I have a seconder? Or Norton. All those in favour of removing those two councillors from those committees, please raise your hand. All those against? Thank you very much for that vote. All right, so now we have to consider um, the Smith Trust. Just as a matter of urgency, um, the Smith Trust have got a garden party on the night, yeah. which some of us here worked hard to get two new <coughs> houses for the village. And I, I think and that I, you should maybe go. Maybe you'll go in my place. Well, I've, I've actually been invited to oh, have you? But yeah. I think you should go because you have been working with them for the last few years, so I think it's appropriate that you should go. No, but you've been booted off, you can't. I've been booted off. It's, not, it's, not, a, it's not a meeting, it's a garden. It's a I don't care. I don't care. Okay. You stick it. All right, uh, we're now going to correspondence and requests. To note any correspondence by the clerk? Nothing that hasn't been sent on. Okay. Um, AOB and agenda requests. Please, if you'd like something on the agenda next time, this is your, this is your chance. What's this? I'll go on the agenda next time. Any, well, other, any other business? Hang on a second. Speeding. Speeding, okay. You'd like Can to we down? have the police presence in the villages to catch some of these idiots that are still speeding? Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, if I might make a comment on that, I, I got caught speeding a number of years ago in Hillies. Believe it or not. No, I hard to believe, I did. And I was chatting to the policeman as he was filling in the form. And I said, and uh, he said, well, he said, the reason I'm doing this is because the parish council have been complaining about speeding through Hillies. Okay. So my point is, first of all, of course, um, basically, the parish council complain sufficient that they will take notice. Okay, so let's have it on can, the agenda. Can I suggest that rather than putting it on the agenda and waiting a month, I simply write and ask them to come. <coughs> yeah, well, it's well, not well, a decision by council to stop in their power, but if you would like me to invite them to come on and we do that. Well, it was the quickest. Yes? yes. Well, where's our Western Tech thing? It's still with them. Um, um, I will check the emails and send them across. Okay. Okay. Well, no, no, that's fine. We'll okay. the way back. Okay. Any other further agenda requests? 
Um, I am Diane Morton. I'd like to. Uh, you, I don't think you can. I don't think no. this is. Oh, sorry. Okay. So we'll have the public session once we finish the agenda. Yeah. Any yes, other agenda? I've got plenty for the. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Clar clarification of why the car park. Money is now to be received as a donation rather than a share, as it has been for decades. In so is that an agenda item? Yeah. Okay. Stick it on the agenda. Stephen? Why my request to see to see the car parks accounts has been ignored at least eight times. I'd like to know why. <laughs> Will given up our historical land claim to ownership of Marsh Common be voted on? Why didn't our chair meet the police over concern about safety for Safe Harbour? It was absolute chaos over that weekend. We have been discussing that with the well, we, we have, have we? The is, that, is that the council or you? The council. Well, that's news to me. All I right. haven't seen anything. Any, anything else? Yeah. All right. Um, public questions and comments. Uh, this is the public session now, and uh, we've got 20 minutes for this, but we have uh, three minutes for each person. Hey, uh, Jude. Hey, Jude. I wondered hey, where, whether you were going to bring this. Oh, come on. Say, you caught me on the back foot. Are you going to put hey, on, 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 on the agenda? On the agenda. Okay. All right. right um, on so, uh, if you would like to speak in this public session, please raise your hand. We have Brian Everett and... Cook. Uh, Brian, would you like to go first? Yes, uh, I've been there for now 54 years doing comms. Been on the parish council for over 20 years. One thing or another. I have never witnessed anything like I've witnessed tonight. It's absolutely heartbreaking. It's a sheer evil, in my opinion, what's happened. Everybody's allowed their opinion and what they can do, and it shouldn't be taken personally. Now, as regards to the ownership and all the rest of it, I'll just do that so quickly. King John gave the out of Ramsey the manor of Brancaster, which consisted of 550 acres, and that's to the east of the, uh, of the village of England. Along came uh, 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 Melbourne Barclay. He put a, a private act to apartment, which cost him a lot of money at the time. And in that, he gave to the village 618 acres of salt marsh common. He also, uh, also, as I've just said, gave 550 acres to the manor. That's still the ground the manor kept off. Um, in 1765, this act went through. In 1841, the Italian one came along. This very time, the plastic pot had been recorded earlier. It's one of 6% of tidal wars in England. It was actually uh, very high by all the landowners, so it's a very fair document. And in that, again, it reinforces that the parish of Brankster on 618 acres of salt and cotton. This common included the, uh, the golf club and it started at the uh, border of Titchwell with Brancaster, came through along to the green along the south side, went from the green over to the ninth, back by the first two bridge. <coughs> this is all documented and you can't get away from it. In the, in the entire war, it quite plainly says, that this was given to the village of Brancaster, <coughs> given to the village of Brancaster, and all the landowners in this area agreed to that. So that's a legal document, you can't get away from it. And then the other side, what we like to say is the parish council is, right, and if you cook with court cases to back up what I'm saying, and the, and the Open Space Society, who was always involved in them, but the prime factor of the parish council is to look at us and the assets of the village. The assets of 680 acres of land. There's been a case on record where the parish council is doing very much similar to what we think our parish council is doing, and that's letting this land go. The commoners and, <coughs> and uh, the landowner took, <coughs> took them to court, took the parish council to court. 
the High Court, High Court ruled that uh, the parish council had given away the land that actually belonged to the village, and they were in fear of losing their property, their houses. Thank goodness there was an out of court settlement. I can't what that was because of federal court. Okay. Thank you, Brian. You've had your three minutes, and thank you very much yes, indeed, because I know you've done a lot of research. Minutes, All right. well done, my thank you very much. Thank you. Rod Cook, would you like to speak? Yes, yes please. I'll get off. Just stop by uh, carrying on with Brian has stopped. And we put together, as the uh, well, Secretary, by the way, for Scotland Heaven Lift of Common Right Office Association, um, we put together Brian's leadership and using Brian's archive, this photo, which basically uh, it lays out the history of the Bradster Common and the ownership issues re relating to that. So it's all there. Brian's got the archive. We copied from his archive and we put it together for the planning inspector inquiry, which uh, due to some protocol or other, we weren't allowed to present. But that is there, the parish council can have a copy of that any time to support their claim to those, uh, those acreage that Brian has mentioned uh, <clears throat> just now. I've got it on, uh, on the computer, I can send it to your clerk if necessary uh, by email or whatever electronically, and you can print it off or whatever. But there we are, that, that is there for the parish Thank council you. to use. Thank you. To use. Um, I'd like to just pick up what um, your clerk said earlier. He talked about a vexatious freedom of information <coughs> request. I have never had any correspondence from your council to say that anything that I've sent on behalf of the, the association has been vexatious. What I did get from your clerk was that he was very busy and wasn't able to get to the matters of, of information that I've been asking for. Uh, I have left, left that last spoke to the committee. They have agreed that that can be left for the time being. Um, what has happened over the past uh, two years at least um, is that your parish council has refused to acknowledge the association. You have refused to sit down with Skullhead and District Commoners as an association, we had a, I had a fellow asked to uh, have a Zoom meeting with the chair <coughs> and one of the councillors, uh, which turned out to be a matter of trying to knock Rod Cook. I repeat again, I am secretary for the association. I do what the association asked me to do. Now, one, one, um, one or two other points, just to say, you talked about the unlawful encampment. Two-thirds of that car park are unlawful. Shouldn't be on the compound. The original car park, which was agreed by the district council, was for a, a car park a third of that size. The common had been encroached upon by uh, two-thirds more. He talked about uh, if this was a slug, you use my name, okay, about £350 an hour for this, that, or the other. I speak for the association. I don't find anything that the association doesn't want to do. <coughs> so I speak for the association and I say that you took, as a parish council, £37,000 last year from that common. Nothing to be spent back on the common. £37,000 to subsidise your rates. Thank Those you very much. The common, right holders, the common right holders <coughs> own their common rights, their private property. Well, I have one last thing to say because Bob Lawton gave me the parish council records, the archive, and if only you would look at that archive as well, you will find the information is all there. Thank it's you. You've had your three minutes. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. I would say that whenever I refer to you, I always refer to you as Secretary Chakra. I've, I've looked at the minutes and certainly that's not the case. Are there any anybody else who would like yeah, to speak? Yes, please do. Yep. Yeah.
a speaker of ladies from the golf club yep. telling me all the ladies who attend that thing that protest down there. Right. What you want me to know is that's common land. Any member of the public in the British Isles to go on that land for air and exercise. Mm -hmm. You acted out of order. You put bits in the paper. Where did you have a parish council meeting to decide all that? What bits in the paper? You what put you bits in the paper about the safety and everything else. So where did you have a parish council meeting? You was acting for the parish council. Do you mean the, the article on the unlawful encampment yeah. when I was called for, when I was called by Stuart Anderson from the EDP for about it? Yeah. And he asked my opinion and I said we need to be involved because of safety. <laughs> that land is nothing to do with the Parish Council. The Parish Council give away two million pounds worth of village assets. And what you're doing here tonight as well, the steam increase. The whole parish council is a total disgrace because that's golf club. Who oh, you are, golf club members, friends, parties, you're a disgrace. Oh, you're, you're, not you're not acting for the parishioners, you're acting for the golf club. Do you know what? I, I'd be, I think I would be happy to call an election tomorrow. Call cool one then. Uh, we can't legally, we'd have to have everyone's agreements. But I have to say that I haven't. Since the agenda went out, I haven't received any complaints from anybody. Well, you don't want to know, you? Yeah, and that's, and, that's, and that's your right as a parishioner to come here and tell us your opinion. Them two people do more work in this village than any of you lot. Well, well, I'm not going to be yet. Hang on a second, Mr. Pete, he's still got his three minutes. I don't know. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. <laughs> I will turn around and say, my father, God rest his soul, would be turning in his grave. He died about two years ago, come December, and he said, you ought to watch out for these lot, boy, because nobody ever appreciates what you do around here till you don't bloody do it. Mm -hmm. How you treat these two there, for all they've done, for all the village, all the things they've brought up, to help people, the parking girls and etc. You don't realise what's going behind the scenes. My father turned around and worked with his brother for donkey years, got swindled in the key, all the bloody time he went to see. He said, you wait till I'm gone, mate. Won't stop. <laughs> Timothy Evans and Derek Bentley, eat your heart out, because I heard enough. <laughs> Brian, you've had your three minutes, I'm afraid. Is there anybody else who would like to speak? Excuse me, but this is such an important subject, and I don't think the three minutes really should be... Brian, I'm sorry, but this is a meeting where the rules are put out. That's Nazi rules. <laughs> I think that's the second time today that I have been on the subject of Nazi rules. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've allowed your councillors to interrupt all throughout your life. Tom, you went there on that Zoom meeting. Rob, you've had your three minutes. Two, oh, yeah, I know. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Yes. Um, on behalf of the Grand Sister Community Sports Club, which is, that is its proper name, um, I, would, <laughs> um, I would just like to, whether we could discuss at some stage how we might manage um, uh, problems that arise during tennis week. That would be something that would be good to put on an agenda. Thank you. Uh, to, to have a discussion about how we can work to me, to, together as a community with the problems of the uh, teenagers in the summer on the mm. tent. Yes. Simple thing is lock the tennis court. We did. We did. We did. They just threw bottles over the field. Yes. Yeah. She's very large on that because when I was the borough councillor, we actually had an all party meeting from the police, the supermarkets, to the borough, and actually we managed to calm it down. We had a lot of, I don't know if you guys remember the groupings on the beach, when they used to have, uh, I say raids, but you know, parties and things like that, for the kids, and uh, we actually managed to, uh, uh, between that and sort of making it clear to the, the, uh, the uh, supermarkets they shouldn't be sending booze to underage kids and all that kind of stuff, we actually managed to calm it down quite considerably. So maybe that is a new generation of kids Effectively, fell a while ago. We ought to maybe reinstate that. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I'm Cameron. Um, can I just start the Zoom meeting where the motion of no confidence was agreed? Was that the EGM on the 6th of August? There was no Zoom meeting about the motion of no confidence. It was a private meeting, but they must be informed there was, involved. I phoned. How, how was it arrived at? <coughs> so I telephoned. After we heard the radio interview that the, the councillors did, talking about their participation in the um, camp out, and after I had received this anonymous um, packet that I sent to the police right away, um, I telephoned the councillors to tell them this. Individually? Yes. Do you no, no we, we never had one. I spoke to Chris three times on the phone about three different concerns I had and things that he had told me that were not true. And I spoke to him on the phone three times about that. <coughs> to Chris, to Chris on. Never spoke to me, I didn't know nothing about it. I you know you've been involved in the setting up of that um, um, protest. In fact, if all the people were here, including the police, they would actually confirm that we were not involved in setting it up. Nowhere near. But because the chair of the parish council said so, she has got to be believed regardless of what anybody else says. Simple as that. I think I had the same problem in Rhodesia. Oh, there. Okay, so now I'm accusing people. I think now I'm being, that's the third time I've been accused of being three minutes. Yes. Councillors talk directly <coughs> to Stephen and Sorry? Chris. Did what? Did any of the other councillors talk directly? No, no, no. Because we were dealing with the chairman. Everything goes to the chair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all through the chair. Everything goes to the chair. And, no, and normally speaking, anonymous correspondence that comes into the parish council or members of is disregarded out of hand because it is anonymous. But for some strange reason, this part of anonymous correspondence was accepted, discussed, and this is what you found tonight. Are, are there any other members of the public who would like to speak? Can I just ask one question? Uh, Who's that? Do they stay as councillors? Yes, they do. They do. Yes, stay. they do. They're just stripped of their. Of the external of committees. committees. Of the external committees. Yeah. But we haven't got to be doing no work. We haven't got to do all the work at all. I, I can't believe I can't hear. Sorry. Thanks, Jim Crossman. I would just for one like to say big thanks to Chris and Steve for the work they have done on those subcommittees because there has been a huge over the years. George? Uh, two points, one very quick point of information. On the, in regards to the um, White Horse planning application, the government appeared to be changing the planning rules or have something in progress that they intend to allow uh, people at restaurant owners, publicans, to decide for themselves on what they do and be able to keep existing temporary structures on a permanent basis. So it's something to look out for in Thank the future. You. The other thing is, is again about the big topic tonight, um, it seems to me that there has been a concerted effort to collect what can only be called a clique to put uh, an argument for a, a, a vote against Eastern councillors by, what shall we say... Members of the Golf Club. I don't think yes. they're any names, but on the basis of an anonymous letter, this is how it's come over to me. It's not now, I can't accept that. Right. I can't, they, they've refuted your arguments. I haven't heard any evidence from you, any of you right. of what your argument is and what evidence you actually have. And I think that should be well, perhaps on the website so we can all see it. It's the, I will put the statement up. In the statement we say that their participation in the unlawful camp out. Now, well, that's an allegation, that's not proof. Yeah. Well, there was a radio broadcast, there was a press so article in the meeting, and I don't accept that. Okay, that's fine. That's fine.
George, you know, you'd be a very valued member of the parish council and of the next election. I think you should stand. I believe you should stand now. 20 years ago. And I'll say the same mind. I've been on this parish council on and off for 30 odd years. How long have you been on? How long have you lived in the village? I think at this point, if there are there any other public... I've got a lot to do, you know. I'm not going to talk about that. Before you see they've got a council of all the parish homes, if you put a tent up there for one night, you can chuck it off the parish council. Are there any other public comments? You're a distraction. I think at this point, I think at this point, we're going to close this meeting now. We're closing this meeting and we're going to go into private session. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you for coming.